Sydney Siders woke up to a red haze across the city on Wednesday after a dust storm swept across New South Wales due to hot and dry conditions. The east coast was struck by a heat wave on Tuesday with the mercury hitting 38 C in Sydney. There were winds of up to 90 km per hour which caused dust storms in western NSW, where the ground is dry after a period of drought. The dust then blew eastwards, engulfing Canberra on Tuesday evening and reaching Sydney overnight. Explaining the phenomenon, Bureau of Meteorology forecaster Rebecca Farr told Daily Mail Australia, strong and gusty winds lifted large areas of dust, and it was transported by wind to the east. The dust is mostly aloft which means it is held in higher air. Because it is aloft and quite dispersed it means there is only a slight haze which will gradually clear as the day goes on. Sydney is much cooler today with the maximum temperature of 26 C but fire warnings remain in place in the far north of the state where temperatures will reach 40 C. The heat wave is continuing on the east coast of Queensland with the mercury hitting 36 C in Brisbane. Perth will be 33 C and sunny with a possible shower in the evening, while Adelaide will be 22 C and partly cloudy. Hobart will be 18 C with some showers, Canberra will be 24 C and Darwin, as usual will be 33C down south it's cooler with Melbourne reaching a maximum temperature of 19C on Wednesday. <music> Meanwhile, there is more relief for families in flood-ravaged Townsville as the rains remain at bay for another day, with temperatures of 35C. Receding floodwaters following Queensland's once-in-a-century monsoonal deluge have left authorities racing to dispose of hundreds of thousands of dead animals that are posing a health risk. Cattle, sheep and wildlife perished in the unprecedented two-week rains, which left large swathes of the state underwater. Their putrefying carcasses pose a health risk to clean up crews and to local water supplies in flooded communities. The growing hazard comes as Townsville Health Authorities warn residents to take precautions when cleaning flood affected buildings. One person has died and 10 people have been infected by maliadosis, which stems from floodwaters that are heavily contaminated with dirt and bacteria. It's the third flood-related fatality. Following the deaths of two Palm Island men who died at the peak of the floods in Townsville eight days ago. Farther south, police are still searching for a 35-year-old man who disappeared in floodwaters at Grover Creek on Friday. In rural communities, exhausted graziers are becoming increasingly concerned about the flood's likely financial impact, which is expected to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Prime Minister Scott Morrison told Parliament on Tuesday he would ensure a recovery and restoration plan would restore North Queensland cattle farmers to the prosperity.
The flood crisis was also discussed in the first sitting of Queensland's parliament on Tuesday. The opposition grilled Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk about a decision to open floodgates of the Ross River Dam at the peak of the floods, which inundated many houses. Ms. Palaszczuk said the dam belonged to the Townsville Shire Council and it had acted on advice from various government agencies. Meanwhile, the mopping up in Townsville continues. Officials have deemed 2950 homes damaged of the 8,000 assessed as an appeal to raise funds for people affected climbed to $3. $6 million. As of Tuesday, insurers had received 14,600 claims from people in Townsville with losses estimated at $175 million.